श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम 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 श्रीराम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम जय जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम 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 जय राम जय जय राम 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 श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय राम श्रीराम जय राम जय जय Sri 
राम जय राम जय जय बोलो जय जय राम जय जय राम बोलो जय जय राम जय जय राम बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 बोलो श्री बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम जय राम जय राम जय राम बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम बोलो श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम जय जय राम बोलो जय जय राम बोलो जय जय राम बोलो जय जय राम 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 बोलो जय जय Today I would like to sing uh, Abhang, written by Sant Tukara Maharaj. He is trying to explain the inexplainable through similes that even a child can understand. He says, the Lord dwells within you only we are unable to understand we are not aware such a wonderful coincidence that swami was also telling me telling me that we should try to emphasize this particular aspect of the god within you this was only in the morning and suddenly this struck me how tukaram has explained he says deha devache mandir the entire body is a temple of the almighty because he is within you how for that he is giving an ex- explanation जैसे ऊसा से साखर द वे शुगर दैट वी ईट कंज्यूम इज हिडन इन द शुगर केन ही सेस द वे बटर इज हिडन इन मिल्क सो ही गिव्स अ सो सो टू टू एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड although we cannot see with the naked eye all these things but it is seen finally same way lord is dwelling within all of us 
that's what even our guruji puji guruji ramdas baba was also trying to explain to us we don't have to go seeking the lord outside in the outside world he says why do you go to the temples not in the negative sense he says see him within you so this is one of the songs which i have chosen for today's uh, presentation i at the lotus feet of puji guruji ramdas papa and our dear muktan deswami ji i pray to their lotus feet and start this i have composed this in ragam called madhu counts <coughs> it's basically a, a hindustani raga मंदिर आता आत्मा आता आत्मा परमेश्वर परमेश्वर दे मंदिर देवाचे मंदिर देह देवाचे मंदिर देह देवाचे मंदिर देह देवाचे मंदिर आता आत्मा परमे ईश्वर आता आत्मा परमेश्वर आता आत्मा परमेश्वर आता आत्मा परमेश्वर देह देवाचे मंदिर आत्मा परमेश्वर आत्मा परमेश्वर आता आत्मा परमेश्वर आता आत्मा परमेश्वर देह देवाचे मंदिर जशी उसात ओसा खर जैसी उसात हो साखर जैसी उसात हो साखर जैसी उसात हो साखर तसा देहात हो परमेश्वर तसा देहात हो परमेश्वर दासा 
देहात हो ईश्वर कसा देहात हो ईश्वर दे देवाचे मंदिर दे देवाचे मंदिर जैसे दुदा मदे लो जैसे दुधा मधे लोणी जैसे दुधा मधे लोणी तसे देही चक्रपाणी तसा देही चक्रपाणी ओ तसा देही चक्रपाणी तसा देही चक्रपाणी तसा देही चक्रपाणी तसा देही चक्रपाणी देही चक्रपाणी दे देवाचे मंदिर देवाचे मंदिर देव देहात देहात देव देहात देहात देव देहात देहात काहो जाता देवड़ात काहो जाता देवड़ात काहो जाता देवड़ात काहो जाता देवड़ात तो ये सिर्फ देव देहात देहात है इस विधि न्यू सो काहो जाता देवड़ात है Why this? Where is the need to go to the temple when you can find him within you? Kaho jata devada te kaho jata devada te. Tu ka sange hai mudha jana. Tu ka sange hai mudha jana. तुका सांगे मूढ जना 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 तुका सांगे हे मूढ जना 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 तुका सांगे मूढ जना तुका सांगे हे मूढ जना देही देव का पहाना देवी देव का पहाना देव देव का पहाना देवी देव का पहाना देवी देव का पहाना देवी देव देही देव का पहाना देही देव का पहाना दे देवाचे मंदिर दे देवाचे मंदिर जय जय विठ्ठल जय हरि विठला जय विठल जय हरि विठला रे जय हरि विठला जय जय विठल जय हरि विठला ओ जय जय विठल जय हरि विठला विठल विठल जय हरि विठला रे 
विठल 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 जय हरि विठल 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 जय हरि विठल बोलो विठल 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 जय हरि विठल बोलो विठल 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 जय हरि विठल 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 जय हरि विठल 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 जय हरि विठल 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 जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल ओ जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल बोलो जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल बोलो जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल अरे जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल हरे हरे जय जय विठल जय हरि विठल 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 ओम जय सदगुरु महाराज की राम जय राम जय जय राम वी हैव बीन गोइंग थ्रू द कंटेंट्स ऑफ द बोर्ड यू नो यू रिमेंबर आउट ऑफ द थर्टी बोर्ड्स एनी कोटेशन दैट कम्स टू अस इन आवर माइंड एनी वन Huh? Ah, the world we live in. That is enough. That is enough. One one quotation of Papa is enough for us to go deep within and also to witness his various leelas outside. When we are in a satvic mood, we will be able to dwell on it. Otherwise, we will be preoccupied with so many things. Doesn't matter. 
but during our sober moments when this comes back to us again and again and again one article one situation one person you know will be instrumental in helping us to see him just now you know the beautiful bhajan we were not able to understand closely because it was in marathi but because he briefed in the beginning just as sugar is in the sugar cane just as the butter is in the butter uh, the curd you know it is inherent it is not a thing that has to be brought from outside only a certain process is needed that's all do you remember the first uh, ppt you can put that again pressure in vivek chudamani in one of the vivek chudamani is a uh, is a gift by adi shankara where you know he brings about one shloka aptoktim khananam two families are living in the same compound they are very very close children of this will go and play there and eat there children of that will go and you know harmonious something like one family suddenly the head of the family one family passed away everybody rushed in after the obsequies were over suddenly they found they couldn't find any 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 saving so the el- son came and told the other uncle uh, we have found out we have searched for it we couldn't find anything how are we to uh, move ahead from tomorrow onwards is a question mark so the uncle coolly said don't worry your father has earned he has kept sufficient money not only for you for generations to come but you will have to make your own effort not by calling it will come unless and until self effort is made it can't be anarthar and he showed the path in a particular room there will be a loose tile flowering tile and the normal course nobody will be able to see but you take it out and preferably you do it after midnight preferably early in the morning nobody should know take your crowbar or any implements and then start digging whatever comes out of the digging don't throw it outside it should not be a problem for anybody nor it should atten- attract at- attention of anybody but perseverance and patience and necessary as you keep on doing it for days together one day you will hear the metallic sound you are crowbar hitting a vessel you know immediately remove everything and then take it out open it own it this is how this lo- this loka was interpreted to us by chaam swami chinmayananda ji way back in 60s so like that we have to do we will now go through that uh, ppt video you know video same thing we have to do for ourselves not on the superficial plane should i say ha huh? chandu unearthing the treasure within during the sanya centenary year of beloved papa a year long in depth study was undertaken yeah. on papa's first book in quest of god from 27th december 2021 to this year 2022 no problem sadhagas should know that the purpose of the in depth study of in depth study of beloved papa's in quest of god is to experience the presence of the indwelling and all pervading reality ram only by delving deep into the text through regular and persistent efforts 
to contemplate, reflect and meditate on the theme contained therein. This can be achieved. Certainly not by merely reading the text at the surface level. In Vivek Chudamani reminds us of the salient fact. While exploring the exceptional journey of self-discovery, a profound shloka, shloka number 65, from Vivek Chudamani offered us a unique understanding of this in-depth study of in quest of God. Parampuja Adi Shankara's Vivek Chudamani is undoubtedly a masterpiece of Advaita philosophy and perhaps his most famous non-commentarial work that expounds Vedanta in all its glory and grandeur. The slogan reads, Aptoktim khananam tatho perishila dukkarshanam svikritim nikshepa samkshepate nahibahi shabdaistu nirgachati tadvad brahma vidopadesha manana jyanadi birlabhyate maya karya tirohitam swamamalam tattvam naduryukti vihi Meaning is, as a treasure hidden underground requires for its extraction competent instruction, first thing, then followed by excavation and removal of stones and other things lying above it, and finally grasping, but never comes out by merely being called out by name. Similarly, the transparent truth of the self, the indwelling reality, which is hidden by maya and its effects, is to be attained through the instruction of a knower of Brahman, followed by reflection, meditation and so forth, but not through perverted arguments. To better understand the purport of the shloka, we remember Puja Swami Chinmayanandaji used to narrate a story of two families who were living in the same neighborhood. Two families were living in the same neighborhood. They were close to each other, distance-wise as well as emotionally. They used to join in each other's celebration at both houses. Children of one house would often go and play in the other house. In fact, there was no sense of otherness among them. One day, unexpectedly, the head of a family passed away. The members of the other family rushed to help them during their grief-stricken moments. They tried to console the wife and children and assisted them in carrying out the last rites and all the rituals thereafter. On the thirteenth day, as the rituals got over, the eldest in the grieving family approached the head of the other family. Uncle, we were looking for the savings our father had made over the years, but couldn't find any. We are worried about how we are going to survive from now onwards. Uncle replied, Oh, don't worry. Your dad has worked hard and made a good savings for your family. But there is a condition. You have to make an effort to get it and not to be satisfied by merely calling the treasure to come out. Go to the room in the right side of your house. There, there you would find among the four tiles one rather loose tile unattached to the floor. Wait till it's midnight, preferably early in the morning. And the whole neighborhood is asleep. Gather all necessary tools for excavation. Go to the room. Remove the loose tile and start digging down. Uncle added, there will be plenty of debris. Don't throw them around. 
keep the moon aside. Make sure that there is no publicity for this whole exercise. It may take few nights to finish digging. Never get dejected or dispirited. Have faith in the words of your father. As you keep digging, one day you will hear the sound of your digging tool hitting on a metallic beam. It would be a copper vessel. Don't damage it. Lift it up. Remove the cover on the top. Inside you will find the treasure your father had saved. This will be enough to take care of a few generations of you. Believing in his instructions, they went back to their house and did exactly how they were instructed, perseveringly, without fail. They ne never doubted his words. They were never complacent in following the instructions. Finally, they found the treasure at the end of a long and hard search. This story is a fictionalized version of our spiritual journey. On a deeper reflection of the story, you may find five phases there. First is struggle, then quest, followed by faith, and then practice, and finally self-discovery. First is struggle. In this story, the family that loses their head is facing a serious setback in their life. Life is full of ups and downs, pleasure and pain and success and failures. Often expectation is one thing, but reality is something else. Nobody's life is a bed of roses from the beginning to the end. A person becomes a seeker when he realizes that nothing is eternal in his life and everything that he was holding dear is ephemeral. Next is quest. When the heartbroken family came to know that they were in deep trouble and utterly helpless, they went to the person whom they deeply trusted and whose wisdom they unconditionally believed. When a seeker realizes that he needs guidance on the direction of his spiritual journey by divine providence, a guru, personal or impersonal, arrives to direct him towards the ultimate goal. The quest begins when we are humble enough to admit that where we are now is nowhere near where we need to reach. Faith. In this story, the grieving family has full faith in their advisor and faithfully followed his instructions. In life, finding one's guru is only a beginning not an end in itself. One has to have unconditional faith in his wisdom and faithfully follow his instructions. It is worth remembering that what we see as a butterfly is the culmination of a transformative journey of a caterpillar. The smooth pebbles we see at the seashore started their journey as rough-edged rock pieces. Practice. Having received the instructions, the grieving family, without any doubt or trepidation, acts on his words in right earnest. Every aspirant has to keep this in mind. The Guru is a guide to the destination, not the destination in itself. Having found the Guru is not enough. One has to practice his precepts unfailingly. Finding a signpost is important but it is even more important to walk in the direction with faith, conviction and commitment. Self-discovery. If we decide to follow our Guru's message, we will have to dig deep into our inner resources. As we go deeper, we will find that the divine treasure we are searching is already within us. From the very beginning, we have been searching outside all over like the musk deer in the Upanishad story, frantically searching for the divine aroma. Every drop in the ocean 
contain the trace of salinity. He, every one of us contains the essence of divinity. In Birad Papa's words, be conscious always that the God that you pray to is within you and everywhere about you. His protection and grace are there ever for you. Be always aware that he is guiding you from within. <coughs> so in the case of Beloved Papa, God guided him through a realization of the ephemerality, you know, the transient nature of the world outside. And then to get more and more clarity on the spiritual journey, he was blessed to have the aptitude to go through the wisdom teachings of great masters and then receding from the outer world to the extent possible while discharging his duties. He was a grihastha. He was running a textile unit. Not straight away withdrawing from any of it, but he was simultaneously developed. This digging was going on because he was made to, as you know, go through successive failures, you know. Failure after failure after failure. And then he was desperate, frustrated, and he cried out. God was making, you know, ripening, you know. Unless and, until, unless and until that stage comes, it will not ripen. So for that, God has to make him to see the total hollowness of the, or transient nature of the outer world. Then only he will prioritize to go within and find the treasure within. Just like we heard that they in the, they, this is a temple in which he is there. But unless and until the churning takes place, the butter will not come, you know, that we know that. He is teaching us through that butter. When we are churning the curd, probably we are satisfied with the emergence of butter so that we can use it. But actually, now we realize that it, what we have to learn from it is unless and until you have faith in the words of the masters and try to go you, within by churning. Manana. Sravana manana nididhyasana. No? In all, not only in tr this treasure, anything, you know, we have to do that. And then finally, we get the butter. So when he made us to go through the inquest of God, previously we were enjoying it because it was written by Parampuja Papa and the language was so simple, looks very innocent and uh, very interesting because it contains not all philosophies but anecdotes which touch our heart. But later on when he prompted us to go deeper and deeper into it, then it was revealed that he wants all of us to search for the treasure within, not by merely reading it, but going deeper into it and at the same time ensuring that our outer life is compatible with this inner aspiration. Because none of us or most of us will not be able to take it up on a full-time basis. God has given, God has assigned us to become a grihastha, a professional, a social being. While involved in these three tires of life, it may not be possible for us to exclusively sit 
or concentrate on this aspect. So then, in order that we don't get deflated or discouraged, Papa says, you ensure that your outer activities are in conformity with your goal. So we can do the digging, not merely during that particular time, every time, even the period ever so small. Whatever that goes out from us, we have to ensure whether it has got any tinge of self-interest, self vested interest. If we are free from that, then it is compatible with the inner aspiration. That means the me and mine. You will all find that in the second chapter itself, when he talks about renunciation, this was made explicitly clear that people, we feel that we are doing. We have this. But actually, we owe our origin to him. Initially, we were not able to understand that. Then we came to know that even this human birth is a gift of him. Because he is the seed. We were previously thinking that our parents are our cause. Then we realized, no, the parents also had their own parents. And they had, grandparents had their own parents. So it has not started from our, this thing, no. The whole journey has started from where our intellect cannot reach. So when we go to Shastras like Srimad Bhagavad Gita, where the Lord says, I am the Bijam. Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutanam. I am the eternal seed of everything. The other day we were reading four or five shlokas, you remember? So in that three or four or five stanzas, the Lord is making explicitly clear that it is from Him everything has come out. And Papa describes what it is. He says it is the Mysterious power, subtle and mysterious power. So God is not an entity. It is the subtle and mysterious power in the form of the seed. It has been going on right from the day, first day of the first creation. And just like we have seen, people who are closely associated with agricultural operations, they will find one seed a paddy or anything, you know, mango, jackfruit, anything. It gives so many fruits and each fruit contains seed again. So it is, the propagation is done by themselves. So we may feel that it is the seed that has given, that now we know that the first seed of an apple, first seed of a jackfruit, First seed of a mango, first seed of a paddy or a pep, first seed of a vegetable, anything, you know, where from it can come. So he answers, our intellect cannot. The bitterness in the bitter gar, the sugar in the sugar cane, the sweetness in the sugar cane, the spiciness of the chilies, the sourness of the tomato, who gave? Same agri agriculturist, same water, same place, that means same soil, same sun, same operations, but it gives different tastes. 
If we just eat and forget about it, no. We start digging out. How can it come? When you grow vegetables, when you have these four seeds, the same soil, same manure, same water, same sun, sun is also needed, na? And you find the, it sprouts, it becomes a seedling, then a plant, then a flowering plant, then the fruition takes place for after pollination, but different taste. So like that we are all unique. We can understand from one the uniqueness can come. So then we uh, come back. So this is, we, we were, we, our human birth was given to us by him. Mamayu nir mahad brahmam. Tasmin garbam dadam yaham. Sambhava sarva bhutanam tato bhavati bharata. My womb is the real Brahman. In it I place the seed. From that to Bharata is the birth of all beings. Tikana? No, you can't do that. Ah, ah. It's very important for all of us. When Papa says at the time of inauguration of this ashram that the ideal of the ashram is universal to spread universal love and service based upon the vision of divinity in everybody. It is a word. How are we to identify this common denominator, the divinity in everybody? So we must go to the souls, otherwise we may not be able to. It will be superficial. So that is why the Lord in Bhagavad Gita, in seven or eight places, keeps on bringing this, hammering this truth to us. That he is the source, he is the source, he is the source. He is the activating principle. He is the motivating principle. Anything that we attribute to anything. Huh? Previous, previous. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sarvayu anishu kaunteya. Murtaya sambhavandiya. Tasam brahma mahadyoni. Aham bija prada pilaha. He says it should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed-giving father. Hmm. Ah, that's <laughs> what <laughs> previous, previous. You go to the first. Okay, you find it difficult. Bas, bas, bas. Bijam maam sarva buddha naam vidyapartha sanatanam buddhir buddhi patamasmi tejas tejasvi namaham. Little down. English, you mean. Little down, man. Hey, Arjuna, know that I am the eternal. No. Uh, know that I am the eternal seed of all beings. I am the intellect of the intelligent and the splendor of the glorious. This word, you know, I am the intellect of the intelligent. Think about it, please. When you see a banana, nowadays we eat, you know, anything that we eat is easy for us to understand. It, it is a gift of Mother Nature. But somebody should come and first declare, you know. Think. Somebody should first come and declare that this is banana fruit. Somebody should say this is salt. Somebody should say this is sweet. Is it not? When there was nothing like that in the world, just like we say, you know, when there was no specks in the world, Somebody has to conceive this idea. There is no reference. 
how to improve the eyesight, you know. They would not have named it as specs. When there was no mic in the world, when there was no harmonium in the world, when there was no electricity in the world, think, first it should strike to him, you know. That is called the original intelligence. The probing nature. We don't know the whole genesis of our uh, pulses, but we can now infer, you know, a person would have seen what we now name it as a paddy. Because Mother Nature would have somehow brought it into existence. But instead of just passing that, this particular person looked at it and then the probing nature, what is that? He would have taken one paddy out of it, paddy grain, and then opened because it is, it is rough. Again, the probing nature motivated him to open. Then he saw what we call it today as rice. Again, the probing nature made him to grind it, to powder it, or to boil it. Today we are eating rice, idli, dosha, upma, everything. That intelligence. The first intelligence, you know. In, we, we are enjoying everything, you know. Now we are sitting on a chair. When there was no chair, somebody should bring that idea into their mind. When there was no shamiana, pandal, when there was no building, somebody should start thinking, you know. Buddhir buddhi I am the intellect or the intelligent. So he is there in the form of all creations. Not merely the life principle. Whatever that we see outside, that is how we try to understand the common denominator, the divinity. Next. Gadir Bharta Prabhu Sakshi Nivasa Sharanam Suhrud Prabhava Pralayasthanam Nidanam Bijam Avyayam. I am the supreme goal of all living beings. I am also their sustainer, master, witness, which were not known to us till then. Abode, shelter, friend. I am the origin, end and resting place of creation. I am the repository and eternal seed. Yachabi Sarva Bhutanam Bijam Tadakam Arjuna Na Tadasti Vina Yasyat Maya Bhutam Characharam. I am the generating seed of all living beings. O oh Arjuna, no creature moving or non moving can exist without me. I am the generating seed of all living beings. That uncaused cause, you know, the first cause which cannot be subjected to go through cause and effect theory. We can name it as uncaused cause, the first one. And that is why we are enjoying. Next. Sarvayonishu kaunteya murtaya sambhavandiya tasam brahma mahadyoni aham bija pradaprida. It should be understood that all spe species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed-giving father. Very clear, no? Very clear. That mysterious, subtle and mysterious power is the origin. From where everything has come. Permutation and combination of so many elements he put that is why different tastes have come, different species have come. And then, Mamayunir Mahad Brahma Tasmin Garbam Dadamyaham Sambhava Sarva Bhutanam Tato Bhavati Bharata. My womb is the real Brahman. In it, I place the seed. From that, O Bharata, is the birth of all beings. Then, over. Right, right. So this we, we are trying to understand, you know. When Tukaram sang this, Papa used to keep on harping this, hammering this, that we should be able to 
first of all intellectually we try to understand that there is a common denominator and just like in the treasure you know this unearthing process has to be on in fact our satsang is also a process of the unearthing he had written a, he went through the whole experience from 1920 to 1922 and then 1922 god felt the right time for him to take the leap and on 27th december 1922 placing his entire there is no other prop no other support his entire thing on him this bija pradapita he left so in this two years this digging has taken place this unearthing has taken place it's a message to all of us so that is why probably he prompted last year that instead of just selling shadabdi 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 do something all of us when when we, swami vivekananda declared you know from the upanishadic words amrutasya putra shrunvandu vishve amrutasya putra you know it was all flowery words for us hey hear this you are all hairs of immortal bliss we did not go deep into it i am suffering for my very existence and how can you say that i am the immortal hair that like that i should go within no the outer poverty has been given to me only to make myself to withdraw myself from certain things and to concentrate upon me that will come to me only when i apply my mind the stressful life is given to us only to go inward and this he shows we repeat again you no know, first chapter first word talks about a person who is having a stressful time the last line of the last chapter says he is leading a serene life so the first to 37 is a journey from stress to serenity how was he able to do it he was able to unearth the treasure he was and then he made it known to all of us from 1920 to 22 the unearthing was done and then he wanted to share with all of us so god made him to undertake this journey yatra and he from after this successful return you no know, imagine he is back again to the cave where you and i cannot even today go there after 100 years there he went and started giving us as if it is a running commentary you know every place meticulous the dialogue the incident and this treasure each chapter is containing some form of treasure so we have been asked to go deeper and deeper into it uh, it is it is, uh, that means the topic was that we have to rely the inner guidance it is a proven fact what we heard many many decades ago of this uh, vivek chudamani you know aptoktim khananam तथोपरीशिला दुत्कर्षण स्वीकृति निक्षेप संक्षेपते नि बहि शब्द निर्गछति दैट श्लोक एंड द मीनिंग विच वी हैव हर्ड मेनी डीकेट्स बैक टू बी मोर प्रोसाइज इन मिड सिक्सटीज वाई शुड इट कम नाउ वेन वी टू कप दिस सेवन डेज प्रोग्राम हू प्रॉम्स अस suddenly the that particular sloka comes before us and then we oh papa wanted us to do like this so he is guiding 
when papa said he was relying on inner guidance we were unable to understand how do hey look here it is not guidance uh, somebody will come and say i will guide you no the guidance comes later on you find the guide intuitively you get the message then you search for the power behind the message it is very difficult to understand how to rely on the inner guidance when we keep on moving on these directions without any any reason you know suddenly the the prompting will come intuitively it will come and then later on we find oh it was an inner guidance the only litmus test we have to apply is whether it is free from vested interest they have to be if it is with some sort of you know self interest then uh, it is not intuitive it is a play of the mind when it is totally free from self interest 100% mahatmas declare that it is directly from the source so then we know that unless and until the me and mine feels totally incapable of finding an answer it will arrogate you know it keeps on arrogating i will manage i will go i will try to do this i will all these things are there but when i have totally uh, when i have met with total failure at every front then when i realize that even the thought comes from him so when i ch- change my thoughts towards him the i this me the dominance of the me and mine gets reduced 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 and at that time intuitively we get this suddenly from nowhere you will get it this is what papa assures from his life it's not a theory not only papa even mahatma ji's life when we go through he will always say the inner voice you know he has termed it as inner voice so this is a very 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 important aspect more of it we will try to share tomorrow morning before we close Uh, uh today we will also hear because many many would not have had the privilege of uh, hearing the voice of mata ji mata ji the adhisthana devata of this ashram that is how papa describes her everything that we enjoy though it was because of the transformation of vital rao to ramdas and swami ramdas that we are all sitting here equally god brought mata ji into the picture she was the shakti dynamic aspect of the reality papa we can call it as the static aspect so mata if we are all anything and everything right from building the bhajan hall in 1930 31 and taking care of all the visitors and uh, building up this ashram brick by brick without asking anybody without mobilizing anybody at the same time becoming responsive to the demands and suffering of the people in and around yesterday one devotee was telling you have not made any mention about the school or hospital no it's not like that mata ji doesn't want any publicity at all because to her it is not a social activity to her it was an activity of love that's all because everybody is their children so taking from one child and giving to another and organizing something it was not something uh, as we call it as an activity to her it was the very life and that is the legacy of this ashram it doesn't say what all ashram has been able to do to anybody you know because bluntly mata ji was when mata ji was asked uh, why are you not uh, publicizing 
what has been undertaken by ashram even when the money flow was not there when the ashram was finding it extremely difficult to make both ends meet still mataji was actively involved in becoming sensitive to these demands and suffering of the people in and around first and everywhere around that was mataji's life to her if one if one word you know what mataji stands for we can say absence of otherness there was no other for her she was the mother of all so we will try to hear her voice may not be very clear but we will try yes prior to coming this ashram there was an ashram in kasaragod the story of yeah, five five okay it's all right papa has been going out and uh, finally uh, his poor ashram brother told him i will put up a small kutia on the banks of the river in kasaragod please stay here to him every command is coming from god so blissfully happily he started saying food was sent he will not accept anything from anybody only food was minimum always in a blissful state at that time mataji who had uh, who had lost her husband at a very tender age of 20 you know to her it was a sh- terrible shock most loving husband so husband's brother and uh, his missus they are like blood brother so he was a doctor he was posted in kasaragod so he took all of them mataji and mataji's two children and they were so suddenly somebody said nearby there is a blissful swami the moment you look at him the bliss is touched so he thought okay it might give, give her some solace so one day he took everybody including mataji mataji was passing through terrible stressful period till that time always moody the moment she saw papa intuitively she knew he is my father mother and guru and she laughed for the first time after a long break she was full of joy then from next day onwards she started regularly going to the ashram papa's purvashram daughter was staying nearby so she will find out whether papa is there and then go some devotees used to 
they were staying and they were all some cha chanting is going on papa used to uh, chant and dance and then he used to share mata ji used to closely watch this and then requested papa to initiate it. then mata ji was initiated with the holy and all powerful ramna and papa made her to pass through the severest test the me and mine you know which he says that the main roadblock that has to be by rubbing and scrubbing it has to be erased none of us can even think of it she was asked to go to any stranger's house and to do all sorts of so called labeled menial work she must to wash their clothes the stranger's house sweep do everything possible so mata ji was hardly 25 years old at that time you can imagine people will mock at her so many things and, and but she was able to stand so the that test was over and finally uh, our, uh, the brother in law had to go back to darwar mata ji refused to go but ultimately she joined them after going to darwar she couldn't spend time much there so she said i am going back to papa's ashram so she told the children two children you come with me whatever i get you will also get but the children told him told her that we will be with the uncle we have to study so with the only sari she was wearing she left darwar by steamboat on those days there was no other mode of transport and she landed in mangalore and from mangalore got into the train to kasargod and it was on the kartika purnima day she walked alone and reached ashram papa at that time was observing mount as uh, so some inmates were there so papa wrote a letter mother you have come to your own place so then she was also doing sadhana simultaneously but to others god wish now we have to sit here you know so the drama has to go on to others god made them to feel mata ji as a lady only why should this lady come and stay in the ashram they had no uh, nothing against papa so they tried one night at about 10 o'clock the lantern was there that was thrown out and they tried to strangle her to death papa said ram 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 immediately they left her and went papa then you know intuitively felt the time has come for us to depart just left at that time then papa would have, papa would like to lose himself you know but mata ji extracted a promise wherever you go i should be allowed to serve you she blocked lit- literally the road and then papa said okay so that night they spent in their purashram doctor daughter's house and then next day got into the train reached kanyagad as you enter no there'll be big hospital there was nothing like that okay there lived papa's uh, purashram one of the devotee they had he had, had a house so they wanted papa mata ji to be there for the graduation they couldn't come so they stayed there at that time somebody proposed why should you go here and there a plot of, we will arrange for a plot this 400 acres land to papa you know everything is okay <laughs> to go is okay not to go is okay then papa mata ji came here looked at this, this particular spot they fixed where they have bhajan hall right from that moment mata ji has been now this is the background so somebody was asking mata ji to describe about this incident you know uh, now that is why we have to elaborately bring all those things <laughs> there was in such a state that nothing happening, happening outside <laughs> would affect her he was so detached 
Neutral. What happened uh, outside? Pause, 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 pause. She said no. Later on, Papa had returned. Those two people came here. And uh, Mataji, as usual, served everybody. They were also given food, whatever is to be given. Then somebody, they said, on that day, we were the one who came and did this too. But to her, everybody was her child. Whatever happened outside did not affect her at all. It was erased at that moment. No mention. Somebody wanted to dig and ask. Now, at that time, she had uh, reached such a state that Papa had revealed himself in her heart. She says, at that time itself, Papa had blessed me to reach that stage. You know? So it was all a drama that is going on. Normally, you and I will identify ourselves with that particular incident and label it as negative or positive. But she had reached a stage where she could see everything as a witness. Equanimity, Samajit Prada. Mm. At that time, she had reached such a state that Papa had revealed you know, himself in her heart. Papa means, you know, she uses the word Papa for the Almighty Lord of the Universe. Huh. So all those external conflicts were like dreams. That man who attacked her came to the ashram afterwards many times. <laughs> he got a lot of love and other things from Mataji. He was coming many times till he died for five minutes. <laughs> she came to Papa with the intense aspiration that he should realize Papa in her heart. And she obeyed <laughs> Papa's instructions to the word. Ch ch chanting the Guru Mantra, contemplation, meditation and service. service. This she did scrupulously as instructed by Papa. Whenever she <laughs> was not possible, it was not possible for her to do it correctly, she would pray to Papa himself to make, make her do it properly. Could uh, she say something about meditation? Meditation is better than anything, Parnaya. I am not meditation. She didn't do meditation at all in the beginning. Up to a great, uh, up to a high stage, she never practiced meditation. Because it only work. She would get sleep whenever she sat for meditation. <laughs> she will tell about the sadhana that she had, chanting of Ram Nam constantly. Papa asked her to contemplate with the mind that Papa, Papa is everything, beyond everything, and he is seated in her heart. And that pray to him to reveal himself in the heart. Seva. This is contemplation or meditation. That is the work of the mind. Boss. Where she is sitting, you know, here. No? Uh, in this bench, we can see the background. Mm, yes. And chanting, that is the work of the tongue. And whatever work had to be done, to be done at his service. Ah, that right. is the work of the hands. So, triple. And she was not sitting for meditation as such. 
she was always working and whenever she had no work, she would be taking a stroll to avoid sleep. <laughs> When she did this triple sadhana, that is chanting, contemplation and service, the mind was getting more and more purified and concentrated. to go within, you know, one point, like this, you know, at the exclusion of all other thoughts. And Mataji, after practicing, even when, uh, by when she said she has reached that stage, in Kasaragod Ashram itself, a stage came when she was very much attached to the form of Papa. Every time she would prostrate, touch his feet, wash, you know, offer flowers. Then Papa said, this is the roadblock for you. So you will, after, you will not talk to Ramdas, you will not talk to, you will not see him, you will not offer any flowers, you will not do any prostration. And uh, she was asked to go out and stay in the daughter's room. It is a very touching letter. So she went. She was almost on the ripening stage, you know. So then uh, she wrote a letter from there to Papa, where she mentioned that Krishna Bhai will not meet you until she realizes you in her. She will spend her night in the mountains and will not take any food. When that letter came, Papa immediately sent a chit. Come back to us. Because she has reached the stage. And when she came, immediately she sat for, Papa said, you know, you should go within. Because her attraction for the external form as, as such has disappeared. So the mind has become mature enough to go inward. Then she sat for three or four hours at a stretch. And when she started enjoying that blissful state, she thought she was, uh, Papa says she was refusing to come back. And finally Papa said, no. Not only he is within, he is also without as the world. Then only it becomes comprehensive, otherwise it is still compartmentalized. That was the stage, you know, when, when she reached that stage, that uh, people who went there to kill her, she, she did not feel offended. You know? Because to her, everything is okay. In the, in, there is a drama going on. There is a purpose behind everything. We, we Normally, we blame others, but we don't blame. And we, she did not blame anybody, because there is a reason behind it. God has got his own reason to bring out the so-called, what do you call, adverse circumstances for, the, for our ultimate refinement. So anything, nothing was affecting her. And when one devotee asked these questions, Puja Swamiji, you know, Sachidam says, because he can understand Hindi as well. He has been, he has served 40 years. He served 14 years to Papa and 40 years to Mataji. So he will be able to, and he is well up in English, so he was able to translate also when somebody asked this question. Mataji's Malayalam is mixed with Konkani Malayalam. <laughs> and sweet language, you know, we, we were all privileged to hear that. Nimalapavanu, this is what we are. Whenever we come here, Nimalapavanu, Chai Gurjo. Simple, simple words. And even the, uh, we should try to observe her and learn more than, you know, asking for this and that. And by herself, she will reveal so many things. But to watch her itself was a good sadhana for us. 
and that kum that uh, malayalam was very sweet uh, very sweet we uh, when we come here on those days we go straight to the room only from the station we straight away go to the room and uh, see mataji mat prostration then mataji will give us say go to the room have your bath eat or drink and then come then only we come here and even to take leave of her is a toughest we don't know what she will say so under the, because, because you in a, for everybody <coughs> there is a space everybody will feel i have a mother in her and we, we honestly a, a person who has been coming here for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years and a person who comes just now they will get equal love that is called absence of otherness we, it's already time but before we close one more in uh, thing it was in 19 2001 or 2002 2003 when the uh, there was an earthquake in gujarat so night we heard the news previously when there was an earthquake in what is the place lactos asham sent some money later on there was something in the press that uh, it has not reached the people we don't know what is right or so th- we suggested to swami ji why not we build 10 houses directly immediately swami ji said why limit to 10 20 we will do so we uh, that person is here mirabhan is there no uh so we contacted mirabhan who was then working in lic in uh, uh, ahmedabad to find out the details so that we can try to and she moved from pillar to post she couldn't get any information then she herself went and identified an area near morbi and then in pomdas then we went there they were all sitting in the midst of debris you know very pitiable so then we three four people mani pinakin bhai mira ben we all went there and saw for ourselves something should be done so we told the mukhya there there is a mukhya you know leader there that um, uh, you have to somehow pressurize the government to give you land and when you get the land rest of the things we will try to do 150 houses we were able to construct in one year no the main claim is yet to come prior to that a couple of years back a trust a, a new trust was set up here mother krishna bai rural development trust so this was undertaken under its ga- background uh, perfect arrangement was made there was a three tier m- monitoring everything was meticulous each one had to open a bank account each one has to give us the document and when everybody ticks and finally meera ben ticks we will send the money not in one lump directly to the person he will give to the contractor otherwise they should not leave them everything went out one akshay tritiya we did the bhumi puja next akshay tritiya we handed over the whole building ma krishna nagar so we came back and told puja swami ji it was a wonderful program there no politician no no nothing was there only they and uh, their family and we were there we had uh, we distributed papa's book gandhi ji's book uh, they arranged for a big feast everything was okay and when we came here we told swami ji about the whole thing swami ji was keeping quiet <coughs> there was no reaction then in a choking voice she s- he said many many years ago during papa mother papa's time there was an occasion for us to go to gujarat papa mother ji were there i was also traveling suddenly around this area when our cars were 
car was passing through. Suddenly, she asked the driver to stop, came out of the car. There were mud houses, and ladies were carrying water on their head, you know, from distance. So, in Malayalam, she said, it was translated, when am I going to construct houses for these people? So, Pooja Swamiji said, the sankalpa she did on that soil, it has come to fruition now. Na looking back, then we try to understand, no? Not a, p it was a, on that day, it was more than a crore project, 150 houses. Not a pie was mo mobilized. And everything was over in one year time. And prior to that, this Mother Krishna by Rural Development Trust was formed. And the area was named as Mahakrishnanagar. We did not know all this background. Only when Swampuja Swamiji uh, revealed this, then we put two and two together. That was Nataji. until 6 o'clock. <laughs> when somebody goes, some problem will be there. Mataji would have felt something should be given to them. She will keep quiet. Some other visitor will come. She will know. She will not ask anybody. You have got money? Yes. Mataji means everybody in you. <laughs> she will check up whether he is calculating. <laughs> I got 15, I can spare 10, no? That is calculation. Then she will not take. When it is unconditional, <laughs> one devotee, when uh, Ashram wanted some money, so she asked. So he immediately went to the room, took the checkbook, signed, gave it to her. So uh, she asked, how do you know what I am going to write? <laughs> Yours is a partnership. Will he not obey? And say, I am going to now give the shirt to my son. You will publicize only when you see the otherness. To her, nobody was honest. That is why we brought out a small book, Mother of All. <coughs> Spirituality, uh, uh, when, it, when we keep on progressing, the first sign is this whether we are able to expand our love circle without knowing that we are expanding the love circle. It should become spontaneous, natural for us to identify everybody as our own. This is the lesson Puja Mataji gave us, not by talk, but by very life. So many, we thought, you know, during the <coughs> this one-week program, uh, 
uh, we had uh, requested many Mahatmas to give us this Ashirvajan. But uh, our own founding saints should also, they should also be made known to everybody. S many, some of us would have seen her, some of us would have heard her, many would not have heard her. But to hear their voice and to have this, you know, that itself will give a lot of push in our sadhana. Tomorrow or day after we are also going to hear Puja Swamiji's words. Papa's words, day for us today, you were not there. No. So one day Papa's was there, another Mataji is there, and now Puja Swamiji's will be there. Because that will give us a boost. Not that we are personalizing. They stood for the cosmic reality, and that after scaling the heights, they were able to pass it on to us, not through words, but their very life. And every time when we think about it, we only pray, at least give us a fraction of what you have got. That is the only prayer we have. It is already 5.30. If we start talking about Mataji, it will go for hours together. <coughs> Hari Om. Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. Achha, now we all go for the, no Arati, but uh, uh, Agarbati, no? not Arati. Agarbati waving will be there. After that, uh, today the Bhajan Sandhya will be there. Uh, so Shruti Leya from Chennai. She will render the program. We request everybody to come here by 7, 7.15 minimum, 7 o'clock, so that it can go on up to 8.15 and then as usual our posting. So this whole period, you know, we are trying to dwell not as a program, not as a music program, not as a bhajan program, Everything should give a direct or indirect push in our journey towards him. <coughs>